We've talked about apparent luminosity. We've talked about absolute luminosity. We've talked about the Hipparchus scale. Okay, let's change topics a little bit and talk about stellar spectra, the st uh, spectra of stars. <clears throat> okay, stars are categorized also by the kind of spectra that they give you. Now, we've talked about in the past, we said that stars give a spectra called absorption spectra, right? And that's it. We, did, we left it at that. We didn't go into more detail into that. So now we go a little bit more into detail. Stars are categorized based on the temperature and on the kind of spectra that they give you. O, B, A, F, G, K, M. Uh, this whole stellar spectra classification, uh, the person who kind of came up with this was uh, Annie Jump Cannon, famous woman astronomer, one of the early pioneers of stellar spectra classification. She had teams of women astronomers working with her at Harvard University. She got her, I believe she got her PhD there. She worked there for many years. Uh, and she came up uh, with this classification together working with uh, other people in collaboration. She's a very, very famous person. If you want to do your report too on her career, I would encourage you to do it. There's uh, been very famous, several women astronomers in history. Uh, Annie Jump Cannon, Jocelyn Bell, um, among others. O, B, A, F, G, K, M. That's the spectral classification. You can remember this by the mnemonic O, B, a fine guy, or be a fine girl and kiss me, okay? So on your next date, you can use this when you take your boyfriend or girlfriend out and say, I'm learning this astronomy. Let's say you've been trying to really get them to kiss you, but they're not, you know? Say, I'm learning this astronomy, so just do this for the sake of knowledge. Uh, oh, be a fine girl and kiss me, and then give her a hug and kiss her. And finally, you got your kiss that you've been wishing. Say, this is the spectral classification of stars. Okay. Oh, this is Annie Jump Cannon working in her team. Uh, this is uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. See, all women astronomers. And they're looking at photographic plate slides in her, with her team. Uh, and they're looking with their magnifying lens and as soon as they see the spectral type of a star, what absorption lines they read, based on those absorption lines, they can tell if a star is a B star, they can tell if the star is an M star, K star, or so on, okay? And they could crank these out about a minute at a time, okay? Really fast. And thousands and thousands of stars have been classified like that. You see? So what are they looking at when they look at those slides? They're seeing something like this. Imagine looking at this for hours and hours. That's a fun, fun job, right? But doing it at Harvard University, even more fun, right? Famous Harvard University, one of the Ivy Leagues, right? So they look at this immediately, the, this spectral type, you see A, they look at F, well, what's the difference? How can you know this is K, this is G? You have to have a trained eye, I guess, right? But what are they looking for, do you think, that's distinguishing one from the other one? They're all absorption lines, right? Stars always gives absorption line. But notice what? Do you see the M star? It's pretty obvious that it's different than an A and a B. What do you notice in the M star? A lot more absorption lines, right? A lot, a lot, lot more of these. Do, 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 see, you see all of that? Uh, in the K star, uh, th there's still some more. This one is very sharp looking. And then here, there aren't too many, you see? And then G, there's a bunch of them here. Then there's some of them here. And then this one kind of has disappeared. And then F, there's some here. And then A. You see, so. The O doesn't have many, huh? O doesn't have many absorption lines. 
the O is the hottest star. The hottest stars are O's. So the logic behind that kind of, think of it this way, the O is so hot, the molecules are constantly moving, they don't have a chance to absorb that energy and give us a lot of absorption lines. The cool ones are very, very low. The molecules aren't moving very rapidly. So they have more chances of absorbing the energy coming from the sun. And then you get more absorption lines. That's kind of the way. Okay, so not only could they tell if a star was an O star, but they could even tell if the star was an O5 or O6. They got that good at it. So they subdivided it. O0, O1, O2, O3. They divided each of them into 10 parts. B0, B1, B2, B3, B9, A0, so on, so on, so forth. And then M9. M9 is the coldest star. The hottest star is O0. So the O0 will roughly be around 50,000 Kelvin, about the hottest star. The coldest star is an M9, about the temperature of 2,500 Kelvin. And remember, that was the, about the coldest you could have. So on this scale, what is our sun? G2, OK? G2. So where would the sun go? Basically here. Is it closer to the colder end or the hotter end? Yeah, you see there's three, one, two, three, four letters ahead of the sun. So yeah, it is closer to the colder end, you see. If we look at that table, is there a column that shows us the spectral type? Oh yeah, there it is, G2. Okay, don't worry about the, this letter uh, V yet. I'll tell you later on what that means, okay? But just look at this one here, M5. Is this a star colder or hotter than the sun, M5? Just remember, OB, fine girl and kiss me. M is the last one, right? So colder than the sun. G2, same temperature as the sun, you see? K0, colder, right? M4, colder, 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 cold. Uh, this is hotter. Oh, that makes sense. Sirius A is 26 times brighter, and it's hotter than the sun. You see? Uh, Sirius B, colder or hotter? It doesn't give you no spectral type. Why? It's a dead star. White dwarf is a dead star. It probably ends up that white dwarfs are probably a little hotter than the sun, but they don't get a spectral type. They're already dead. One day our sun will be a white dwarf. And somebody later on in the future will say, oh, this was the sun, and it's a WD, okay? That day is six billion years from now, <laughs> okay? Uh, and then M5, M5, so on, so on, K. So you can kind of see there, and then you can see the temperatures of the other stars in the bright list, you see, in this list. This one it probably has some of them that are hotter than the sun, you see, and some of them could be colder. Okay, let's go back now. Do, do, do. Let's see what this table shows us. Oh, okay, here is how they started categorizing them. They noticed that the O stars, when you kind of look at them, they appear blue-violet. Those are the hottest ones. Their temperatures ranges from 30,000 to 50,000 Kelvin. And the spectral lines that they noticed in them, even though there aren't that many, they noticed that they have ionized atom, spectral line, especially helium. Example of that, Neos and Mintaka, Delta Orionis, the fourth brightest star in the constellation Orion. Those are categorized O. B, they look blue-white, 11,000 to 30,000 Kelvin. They have neutral helium lines. They have some hydrogen absorption lines. Example of them, Spica, the brightest star in the constellation Virgin, and Rigel, second brightest star in Orionis. Okay? A, they look white, 
7,500 to 11,000. Strong hydrogen lines, some ionized metal lines. You see? Sirius and Vega. You see that? Strong hydrogen. And then F, yellow white, 5,900 to 7,500. Hydrogen and ionized metal lines such as calcium and iron. Canopus prochion. What was the temperature of our sun? When we first were going over the sun, we said the temperature of the sun is uh, something. What was it of the surface of the sun? 5,800 to be more exact. Yeah. So you see where should our sun go? See that? 5,200 to 5,900. Our sun goes in the closer to this end. So definitely it's a G2, you see? G0, G1, G2. So it looks yellow. 5,200 to 5,900. It shows both neutral and ionized metal lines, especially ionized calcium. Examples of them are Sun and Capella, you see? And then K is orange, 30,900 to 5,200 neutral metal lines. Examples of them are Arcturus, Aldebaran, first brightest star in the constellation Buddhist, first brightest star in the constellation Taurus. And then M, red, orange, 2,500 to 3,900. So basically this is kind of matching everything we've learned up to now. You see the temperature scale? And it's also matching the colors that we've learned. Roy G. Biv, you see? Red, orange, yellow, blue, in indigo, violet. And the names here. Okay, before I forget the sign-in sheet. Okay, just put your name uh, to the right here. There's some space I didn't... Uh, make a rectangle for it yet. So basically, everything is kind of coming together, all these properties that we've learned. And then we have So all stars give strong ionized helium lines. That's what that sheet was saying. Oh, okay, this also shows you, you see here, those lines? See, this is a O8. You see here the helium line that it's showing? And then there's hydrogen lines, there's iron lines, you see? B stars give strong neutral helium lines. A stars give strong hydrogen bomber lines. Oh, we've learned about the hydrogen bomber lines before, right? If I ask you on the test, which kind of stars give the strongest bomber line, you say A star. Let's see if that's true. Let's see if that's true. See the A star right here? A. See the hydrogen bomber line? Uh, see here the hydrogen? You see this dark one? It's the strongest in the A star. See this one, hydrogen, right here? And then this is another hydrogen, okay? So the A star is giving the strongest hydrogen line, right here, these two. F stars give medium hydrogen lines. They're not that strong. They give ionized metal lines. G stars give strong ionized metal lines. So our sun, it doesn't give the strongest bomber lines, but it gives ionized metal lines, okay? You see here, the, this, is, this is the other way to look at it. See the A star, you see here, gives the strongest bomber line right here. This is the bomber line. And then the G star, which is the sun, gives the uh, strong ionized metal line. K stars give strong neutral metal lines. M stars give strong lines of molecules. Well, you can see the M star is distinguished quite a bit. You see? All these lines, all these lines. So all those lines are uh, absorption lines of molecules, like titanium oxide. Okay? Okay, so that's how they categorize them according to their spectra.